Hello everyone, Norma Woodcock speaking to you from Perth in Western Australia. I'd like to speak into the first Sunday of Lent, Year A. And the theme is temptation. So in the first reading, Genesis, we hear about Adam and Eve being tempted. In the Gospel, in Matthew's Gospel, Jesus' temptations in the wilderness. So I want to speak today into temptation. And I wanted to go to one of the doctors of the church, St. Augustine, and he said there are four steps here. He said first step is delight, second is consent, third is deed, fourth is habit. But he also said this, there are those who so wholly reject things plainly unlawful from their thoughts that they're not even tempted. And here we are now in in this century with the neuroscience confirming what this wonderful doctor of the church said. Dr. Caroline Leaf in her book, Switch on Your Brain, page 108 says, your brain becomes what you focus on and how you focus. So the consequence is structural change in the brain that produces behavior because we operate from what we have built into our brain. Extraordinary. So really it begins and ends with our thoughts. So what it means is if you're going to think on it long enough, you're going to do it. And I use a very simple example of chocolate. Many of you would understand what I'm saying. You know there's some chocolate in the fridge and you're sitting watching television or reading a book and you think about the chocolate and you think, no, I won't go for the chocolate. And then you think about the chocolate and you think how cold and sweet it is and what flavour it is. And isn't it true? If you keep thinking about it, you're going to get up and you're going to go and get it and you're going to eat it. But then, of course, we get the more serious temptations to lust, thinking about that woman, that man, long enough, the way they looked at us, the way they, 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 they touched us, the way it's unlawful to even think about it, but we keep thinking about it. Gossip. If I just told them that so they could pray, it's gossip. Slander. Cheating, lying. But I want to go with a little sideways move here and I want to say that also fearful, anxious thoughts can become a habit. And because my work for so many years has taken me into this area with people, I find that if we can stop the thinking before it takes root within us, then the habit can be broken of fearful, worrying, anxious thinking and behaviour. So I want to tell a little story to illustrate that for this session. There's a woman who kept expecting a burglar. And this is for many, many years. They lived upstairs, she and her husband, and she'd say, please go downstairs, I can hear a burglar. And time after time, he'd go and he'd check and he'd come back and he'd say, there's no one downstairs. So this particular night, she said, I hear someone downstairs. He said, there's nobody downstairs. She said, there is somebody downstairs. I could hear somebody downstairs. So with a sigh, he got up and he went downstairs. And a burglar confronted him. And a burglar, the burglar pointed a gun at him and asked him to give over all his money. And, and so he did. And the burglar took all the money and he was about to leave. And the man said, please don't go yet. I want you to come upstairs and meet my wife because she's been expecting you for many, many years. Moral of the story is, what are you expecting? What are you focusing on? Where do your thoughts take you? And you need to harness them and you need to bring them into captivity, as Corinthians says, capturing the thoughts of our imagination. And then you will find that you will have peace and you will not be tempted as easily. So this Lent... This is a very powerful message for the first Sunday of Lent, is to look at our thinking that leads us into temptation and stop and turn to this amazing God who will bring us through it to a place of peace and a place of self-control. God bless you and may you have a good week. I look forward to sharing with you again next week. Thank you.